All right. Uh, in the last class, we have studied uh, engineering materials and their various properties. And today we're going to uh, start lesson three with metallography. Okay, in the case of metallography, um, it is basically the study of materials internal structure, uh, what's happening inside the material. If we uh, magnify a material surface, then you can see the grain structures, their distribution and various faces. If you look at the left figure, uh, it's an, uh, a pure metal uh, uh, micrograph of the micrograph of the pure metal which actually when we look at the microscope metallurgical microscope uh, then we can see the grain boundaries like uh, if we uh, magnify a metal surface pure metal surface uh, then we can we'll be able to see the various grains and their sizes and the distribution sometimes the larger grains the smaller grains how they distribute inside the material <laughs> you can see that and on the right here, if you look at the, the different faces available, uh, like the white region and then the black and white mixture. Uh, this is a typical microstructure of, uh, of steel, which contains uh, pure iron. Uh, the white region is pure iron, and this one is the combination of uh, pure iron and iron carbide. Uh, we'll be able to uh, understand all these things when we study uh, the crystal structure of the material, uh, then uh, of the iron, uh, slow cooling of iron, how iron cools, uh, and the microstructure formation, then we'll be able to understand all, uh, all these uh, structures inside the, uh, the steel. Okay. So the metallography is the study of uh, investigating the microstructure of, of metals or, or alloys or any other material. Uh, to explore the uh, internal structure of the material, to uh, uh, investigate the uh, uh, final behavior of the material based on the structure, because uh, these structures sometimes can predict the uh, mechanical properties or uh, electrical properties of the material. Uh, based on the structure, these, are, uh, these properties changes. And that changes you can actually uh, estimate using using the microstructure of the of that material. <laughs> so also we can also study like um, uh, grain size, uh, the shape of the grain, the distribution of various faces. Like if there is multiple face in a material, for example, if you, if you make an alloy like steel is an alloy of uh, uh, iron and carbon, then we will be able to distinguish the various faces uh, of that material, either uh, pure iron or uh, iron and carbon, mixture of the iron and carbon, iron carbide. Those faces can be uh, distinguished uh, by observing the microstructure. And the microstructure can talk about mechanical and thermal treatments. If you look at, uh, if you have uh, got a metal pitch, uh, which you want to know what type of mechanical treatment has been done on that, uh, that pitch of metal, uh, then you have to study the microstructural uh, view of that, uh, of that material. And then you'll be able to understand the what kind of a treatment has been conducted on that material, as well as you can, uh, you'll be able to estimate the mechanical properties of that material. Uh, how the mechanical properties will change. For example, the, what would be the hardness of that material? What would be the, uh, the physical characteristics, like whether it is ductile or, or, or brittle? Uh, or how much energy it can absorb. Those things can be predicted by looking at the microstructure of the material. And sometimes it is also possible to predict the behavior of the metals or alloys under given condition for a certain condition, like for a certain temperature or, uh, or, or a certain loading condition, uh, how this metal or alloys will behave. We can also estimate that using the uh, microstructure of the material. And to do all these things, like uh, to uh, investigate the microstructure, we need metallography. That means we need a uh, metal specimen, uh, which we need to prepare it for uh, investigating the microstructure or looking at the microstructure through a metallurgical microscope. 
and for microscopic study, uh, it's uh, greatly dependent on the uh, specimen preparation. If you do not prepare the specimen properly, then you will not be able to uh, uh, able to make a decision based on that that microstructure because uh, it is comp uh, sometimes it is very misleading uh, that uh, the microstructure uh, of a material and the surface if surface of the material is not prepared properly then it will be misleading and it will not give you the accurate result uh, in terms of uh, final prediction on on the uh, mechanical behavior of that material or also uh, the composition of various phases in that material you will not get the exact result because uh, when you examine the microstructure of a material, then uh, you actually look at the the various phases of uh, present in that region of the of the metal specimen, and and those those phases, if you cannot do not put, uh, prepare the specimen properly, then those phases will not be consistent. And the volume fraction of those phases, like how much volume of uh, paired light is available, how much volume of martensite is available inside the material, uh, then if you do not estimate that volume percentage properly, then you cannot calculate the uh, final uh, final mechanical uh, uh, properties of that material. So the uh, it is very important to prepare the specimen properly. And for steps uh, preparing an, uh, a specimen for metallography, there are five steps, uh, five or six, six steps. Uh, first, sampling. Where should it take the sample from? If you want to investigate the fracture behavior of the material, for example, if you break a glass and then you want to investigate the, uh, the surface, fracture surface, the surface that has been fractured, like for example, if I uh, want to draw something uh, in here, like you, you have, uh, have a glass bar, something like that, and it has been fractured, okay, in this place. It has been fractured into two pieces. <clears throat> then if you want to uh, investigate the behavior of the fractured surface, then you have to take the specimen and investigate the region where the fracture occurred. Like for example, this region. This region can be uh, can be chosen uh, to investigate the uh, the fracture surface, and uh, and you have to compare that with a pure glass glass specimen. You cut a pure glass in here and then investigate the microstructure, and then you investigate the microstructure of the fracture surface, and then you compare uh, these two. Then you'll be able to understand what happened during the fracturing, whether the fracture occurred through the grain uh, grain boundaries or the fracture occurred through the grades. Like every metal is consists of uh, different grades. Okay. Whether the fracture occurred, uh, for example, the fracture occurred in the along the grain boundary or the fracture occurred through the grades. Okay. So these things can be investigated uh, through this uh, uh, this comparison, and then. Uh, that's why you need to choose. If you if you take the specimen from here, uh, you take uh, investigate this surface. This surface will not give you the exact uh, view. This will be the same as as this surface. So you have to be really careful where you want to investigate, what you want to investigate. According based on that decision, you need to uh, conclude uh, take the specimen from there. Like if you have uh, thousands of uh, metal samples, then you have to choose three, four out of them and then investigate that those metal samples. So this is this is called sampling. Okay, so where and what property you are going to study, then you have to choose the sample according to that. Okay, and for rough grinding, uh, second step of the uh, metallographic sample preparation is the rough grinding. It is basically the fi filing. And, and and also it is also important that this steps is not always uh, you don't have to use this step always because if you want to do the surface analysis fracture surface analysis and you do the filing then you will lose the characteristics of, the, of that surface press surface characteristics will be lost so in that case you don't uh, use the filing but if you want to uh, investigate the mechanical properties based on a, a a metal surface then you have to do the filing and then polishing uh, then uh, other steps will come come into play okay and then the third one is the mounting mounting is also important because uh, the all materials is not uh, like uh, a lot of volume is available in there for example if you want to uh, investigate the cross section of a wire it's just an wire and very small thickness small diameter of the wire and you want to investigate the cross section of that wire 
And in that case, you need to use the proper mounting. You have to mount this wire somewhere, and then you have to uh, do the other operations like uh, intermediate polishing, fine polishing, etching, etc. And how do we do that? For wire, you want to put like uh, put the wire into the epoxy, into the epoxy, and then you, you cure the epoxy, and then you start polishing the surface. Then the epoxy and the wire will be polished simultaneously. And then you'll get the surface. Uh, you have to investigate this region, this region for the metallographic study of that material. Okay, that, that is the uh, importance of mounting. If you have, like, for example, sheet material, it is very difficult to uh, do the polishing, polishing or intermediate polishing. Then you have to do, use, use the certain. Uh, there are certain uh, uh, clamps available uh, in the metallurgical uh, labs. Uh, you can use those labs, or you can use some other methods to. Uh, mount the specimen for the for for prepare, preparing it to investigate the mechanical uh, metallographic structure of that material and number four uh, okay uh, so far do you have any question before i go to intermediate polishing if you have any question please uh, go ahead so the point number two i did not understand the number two the rough grinding right the rough grinding is required like for example if you have a bar of metal and you cut with a saw okay or you cut with, with a grinding wheel and due to that cutting that the surface of that uh, structure will be like this right there will be rough surface and if you want to investigate the rough, uh, rough surface then it's okay the due to cutting if you want to see the effect due to cutting then you don't have to do the grinding but if you want to see the actual microstructure of that material, then these rough surfaces, when you put it under under the microscope, this rough surface will not give you the exact uh, result, like exact volume fraction of various materials available in that region. Yes, sir. Okay, that is why you need to do the rough grinding first to remove the uh, surface roughness. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, any other question? The grinding could change over characteristic change over at a microstructure level change over. I don't know about surface roughness to change over. The connector surface could be cut by she takes me elaborate color, but the surface I come would not have a rough surface type. Take a set a rough surface take a polish coat of it to view the proper microstructure because the how are you viewing the microstructure? Microstructure is viewed through the reflected light. Okay, light is incident on the surface and then it reflects, it gets back and that's where your eye is, okay? And if the surface is rough, then the, the uh, light rays will deflect in various region, various direction. And that is why you will not be able to see the proper uh, microstructure. But if you want to see the uh, uh, effect or effect on that surface due to cutting, or you want to analyze the uh, surface roughness due to cutting, then you can put it under the microscope and then you can investigate the surface roughness. But if you want to investigate the uh, microstructure, that means various volume fraction of that material present in that uh, in that region, then you have to you have to make a plain surface. Okay. Did you understand? Yes, okay. Sir, filling both the sir, we mana polishing to the sir. It's not filling, it's filing. Filing, sir. You use a hand file to grind it. Uh, filing a main uh, main uh, purpose for filing is that to to get rid of the large uh, la large dents on the surface. Okay. After filing, you'll also be able to see the structure like this. Okay. There will be certain directional uh, directional uh, lines will be present in there. Okay. But it, it is the preliminary step before intermediate polishing. Because intermediate polishing, uh, in the case of intermediate polishing, you will be making the surface mirror-like. Okay, mirror-like polishing will be obtained. Then you'll be get uh, more uh, less uh, uh, less bumps in the surface. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other question? Mounting to sir, sir. 
Mounting that means you're holding a, a specimen. If you have a block of material, you can hold it in your, using your hand and then you do the filing or polishing everything. But if you have a wire, then it is very difficult. Okay. And that's why you need to use some kind of mounting. That means you need to hold it with, with some kind of holder. Okay. And then you do the polishing on that surface together. Okay, then you'll get get the structure on, uh, on that place. Like if you if you look, look from the top, then it will be like this, and the wire will be present in here. Okay, and then when you inspect, then you uh, focus the light in that region, uh, the region where the wire is. Okay. The main purpose of mounting is that the specimens that you cannot hold properly for. Uh, filing, polishing, As or uh, intermediate polishing. Okay, or sometimes you won't be able to uh, place the wire under the microscope. Can you do that without any support? No, sir. No. So in that case, you need to have support. And that is what mounting is about. And also there is another important thing about mounting is that uh, if you have a microscope, uh, if you have a microscope, you're looking from the top, and the surface is like this. You place the uh, specimen in here like this, then what will happen? You will not be able to see the proper view. Surface has to be perpendicular to the light, light rays. Okay, properly perpendicular. Otherwise, you will not be able to see that. Okay. So you see a different structures. In some regions, will be closer to the ray, and some regions will be far, uh, further away from the uh, from the view. And the, the, this region will be like uh, shadowed, okay, or blurred. Yes, sir. Okay. Next is the fourth number four intermediate polishing. In this case, we use the MRE papers to make more finer surface. Okay. To, uh, and in the case of using MRE papers, you use like. Uh, 100 uh, grit and then up to 1200 grit. Okay, 1200 grit, and then uh, the higher the number, finer the uh, particles on the, on the sur on the emery paper, and the polishing will uh, the surface finishing will be much better with the, using the 1200 grit. Okay. And after intermediate polishing, you do the fine polishing. In the case, after fine polishing, you'll be able to view, uh, it will be uh, act like a mirror. The surface of the specimen will act like a mirror. You'll be able to view your faces on, on the surface, something like that. And you have to do the do the polishing actually uh, same as that because metal has a shiny structure. That's what the basic property of the metal. As we said in the, in the first lecture, that uh, the metal surface is very shiny and it reflects light very easily. And you'll be able to, uh, after the fine polishing, you'll be able to view your face, face on, the, on the surface. And if you, if you are not able to view the faces in, on the surface, then the polishing is not done properly. You have not done polishing properly, okay? And for polishing, uh, the polishing machines are available. There are some ro rotating discs are available. Uh, this disc rotates and you, you put a velvet cloth on the on the surface of the of the disc, and then uh, use the diamond paste, which is very fine grain structure, fine grain particles, uh, which are uh, used along with the cloth, and then you rotate it, and you hold the specimen in here, and then the, the specimen will be polished. That, that means the very small rough surface can also be eliminated and get a proper plain surface, like glass, like smoothness. Okay, glass like smoothness can be obtained using fine polishing. Okay, even though uh, after fine polishing, you cannot use that to investigate the microstructure. Okay, and to do that, to the in, in, proper investigation, you need to use etching agent. That means on the polished surface of on the polished surface of the specimen, uh, there will be uh, rust and and many other things uh, from the environment. And also, to make the microstructure visible, properly visible, you'll be able to see the microstructure, but that will not be properly visible because of the impurities present on the surface. And to, you have to clean the surface properly. And then after that, you need to use the etching agent, like uh, nitile, nitile, 
uh, or uh, in ethyl alcohol, nitric acid, 2% nitric acid, 10% solution of hydrochloric acid. It also changes, changes uh, based on the material which you are investigating. Different material has different etching agent. What etching agent does is that uh, it actually reacts with the uh, surface reacts with the some material <coughs> and due to the reaction uh, the surface microstructure if if the if the surface have uh, different kind of microstructure then different structure behaves differently with the etching agent for example uh, the white regions are iron pure iron say that that's pure iron and this hash region is uh, iron carbide. Okay, iron carbide. Fe three C. Okay, then iron will react differently with the etching agent of nitel compared to iron carbide with the nitel. That is why they ref they will reflect the light differently due to the reaction. They will reflect light differently. That's that's why these two faces, when we look at the microscope, will appear differently. Some will be dark, some will be lighter. Okay, the darker surface, then we can distinguish that the darker surface is iron carbide and the lighter surface is iron. And different faces, like uh, if you use like iron, copper, uh, copper, alloy, then copper will behave differently uh, compared to iron. Okay. For example, iron will react with nitrile and form some kind of compound, but copper will not. And then those two different material will reflect the light differently. And then you'll be able to see the different colors uh, from the microstructure. And then you can calculate how much uh, uh, how much iron carbide is there and how much uh, pure iron is there. Okay. And based on the, those percentage amount, you can predict the final behavior of the material. Okay. Did you understand? Yes, sir. All right, so next, let's go to the uh, uh, metallurgical microscope. Uh, can, can anybody say uh, what is the difference between metallurgical microscope and light microscope? I'll, I'll tell you, but uh, if you have any understanding on that. The, like the microscope that you have studied in your geology or uh, biology class. Yes. In the metallurgical microscope, we use reflective light. And in the biological specimens, we use the light from the bottom of the specimen. Okay. The light is given from the bottom of the specimen. Light penetrates through the biological specimen and then it moves to the eyepiece. And then we can see the structure. But in the case of metal, metal is opaque. Okay, metal, since the metal is opaque, it does not, light cannot be penetrated through the metal. And that is why we have a different attachment, which is there is upper light source. This light source actually incidents the light on the metal surface and then that gets reflected through the uh, objective lens and through the eyepiece. And then then we see the, see the structure through the eyepiece. Okay, that is the basic difference between metallurgical microscope and uh, biological microscope, that is light microscope. Okay. And all other components are similar, like STS, you can move the space with this, uh, this uh, regulator, and then uh, there is industrial camera to, to uh, take the picture of, this, uh, of the microstructure in view. Okay. And how the microscope works. Okay. I think you already know this. Uh, you have studied a lot in, 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 in physics, right? The focal length, focal point, and then uh, the virtual object, actual object. So in this case, I will go just very simply. Like this is the your actual object, the height of the actual object. It's a 2D view. So height of the actual object. Then when light uh, comes from this uh, from this object, it passes through the objective lens. This is the objective lens, and then it gets expanded, okay, magnified. It gets magnified first stress of magnification, and then when when the light uh, comes from this to through the ocular lens, that means eyepiece, then it gets further extended, and the virtual image is created in here, okay, and which is uh, the total magnification of this uh, this actual object will be the product of 
uh, the magnification of the object objective lens and the magnification of magnification of the uh, ocular lens that means eye pitch okay the, if you want to know the total magnification then you need to know the specification uh, from the mic microscope that uh, the, what is the magnification level uh, magnification capacity of this uh, objective lens and what is the magnification capacity of the eye pitch okay then if you know that this, if this is the 10x and this is 20x 20x the total magnification will be 20 multiplied by 10 which is 200 okay and since there are multiple lenses available then you have to be really careful when you, you, you do that you need to note down which which uh, objective lens you are using uh, and which ips you are using and then you need to multiply it to get the actual magnification and the magnification limit can be like 2000x sometimes 10000x can also be obtained uh, through the metallurgic uh, microscopes and there is also electron microscope uh, which is uh, currently being used uh, very widely widely used microscope is electron microscope to view the internal structure you can do a lot of things using the electron microscope for example firstly you can view the image you can see the microstructure, you can quantify the microstructure, like how much volume uh, percent available in there, then you can easily quantify using the, micro the microscope and, and the integrated software with the electron microscope. And you can also detect what are the elements present in the in that specimen. It can be any specimen, then you can, you can uh, calculate how much carbon, how much iron, how much, uh, how much uh, hydrogen is present in that material can be calculated using the uh, electron microscope and the integrated software in, uh, with that. So how the electron microscope, what is the difference between electron microscope and light microscope? It's kind of similar structure as you see, there is, uh, uh, there is a lens, another lens, and then you have the focusing projector lens, and then you, you see the beam screen where you see the images. Okay, it's similar. The light is penetrating through the condenser lens, and then uh, the specimen stays here, light penetrates through the specimen, then goes to the objective lens, and then it gets magnified. And the, after magnification, the small portion of that magnification gets again magnified. Then you see what you see through the eyepiece. And in the case of electron microscope, we don't use light. Instead, we use electron. The electron is produced from the cathode. Cathode produces electron uh, using the tungsten wire in here. There is a tungsten wire. Using the tungsten wire, you produce the electron, and then electron gets accelerated. The electron gets released from the tungsten wire, and then the, because of the anode is positive terminal, anode actually pulls those electron towards anode or towards condenser lens, and where the electron gets accelerated. That is called accelerating uh, electron. And the voltage that is required uh, for the anode is called accelerating voltage for electron microscope. And due to the high, high accelerating voltage, uh, the electron gets a very high velocity. And because of that high velocity, uh, electrons uh, pass through the condenser lens. Uh, it does not stick to the anode. It passes through the condenser lens. And then con the function of the condenser lens, it's a magnetic lens. And that actually uh, consolidates them and make them linear. Okay, the scattered electrons gets linear, uh, linear velocity. Okay, and then then high velocity electron passes through the objective lens, where the electrons again get expanded. Okay, and the specimen will be here. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, also you should remember that we are comparing light microscope with electron microscope, not the metallurgical microscope with electron microscope. Okay, so the specimen it has to be penetrated through the specimen. So in this case, we are not uh, uh, considering the metallic specimen. I, I'll go to that. How metallic specimen can be used uh, in the electron microscope or in the light microscope? We can also use the light microscope or metallurgical study, but it's a very hectic work. You need to do a lot of lot of work before. Uh, uh, present in the uh, invested in the specimen in here. The specimen preparation involves uh, some some more works. And when the electron penetrates through the specimen, then it gets again uh, due to this uh, objective lens, it gets again expanded. And the expanded electron beams, a small portion of the expanded electron beam, 
again gets expanded using the projector lens and then you view the specimen now now i will come to come to the how metal specimen can be uh, used with the light microscope or electron microscope the, <clears throat> the concept behind it is is that if you have a metal specimen in here you prepare the surface and everything you do the etching all of things and then you embed a plastic material or uh, thermosetting or thermo uh, thermoplastic material on the surface and use the pressure to force it against the specimen okay once the force is done then the metal surface structure is imprinted on the plastic surface okay the metal surface structure imprinted on the plastic surface which can uh, light can be penetrated through that and when the metal, metal surface structure is imprinted on the plastic surface then you use this plastic specimen either in the light microscope or in the electron microscope this is a very conventional type electron microscope okay so in that case you need to do these things more okay more carefully and it is not it does not give actually the very accurate result okay uh, but however it is possible to get uh, get some kind of under uh, a lot of understanding through the investigation of the microstructure which is imprinted on the plastic species okay and the real life microstructure how this microstructure works before going to that we are going to finish that uh, it requires very high power and also it uh, the electron microscope requires the vacuum to control the electrons if there is no vacuum then electron will be deflected and, and this this is the hot this is what i was going to uh, i was talking about that like plastic replica of the surface Rep replica of the surface to be produced uh, to investigate it on, on, under the electron microscope or light microscope in the scale magnification uh, for electron microscope can be obtained like 200000 x Okay. And the real life microstructure, uh, electron microscope, if you look at the real life micro electron microscope, okay. then the specimen actually, uh, electron does not penetrate through the specimens. Electron gets reflected from the specimen. This is the sample. Okay. This is the sample. You put the sample in here. And then if you put the sample in here and then uh, the electron comes from the condenser lens, uh, passes through the condenser lens, and then uh, second condenser lens, and then objective lens, and then the electron uh, impinges on the surface of the specimen and then gets reflected from the surface. Once the electron gets reflected from the surface, this backscatter back, back detector, which actually collects those electrons and that converts that into images. And once the image is produced, that is very high magnified image can be produced through this by controlling the voltage and current, the electron velocity, etc. And also there is a uh, X-ray detector. And this X-ray detector actually detects what are the elements present on the surface, surface of the specimen. Okay. Yes, sir. And also there is secondary detector. The uh, electro electrons that get deflected from the surface is collected through the secondary de uh, detector. Okay, the backscatter detector also produces images and secondary detector also produces images. And those, when those are combined, and then you, you, you will be able to get a 3D structure of that, of that, of the surface of the material. Then you can investigate a lot of things like microstructure, and then the uh, grain size distribution, and then various uh, materials through the X-ray detector, uh, and, and, and the various elements present, uh, present on, the, on that surface. Surface roughness can be also measured through this specimen by producing a 3D structure of that surface, and then you can investigate the surface roughness. Okay, okay. and uh, that is all for uh, electron microscope. It's just a brief overview of the electron microscope. There is a lot to study. If you want to uh, are interest, uh, interested on electron microscope, then you can see the a lot of YouTube videos are available. Uh, you, can, you can see them. And okay, so far, do you have any question? Sir, so we can thermoplastic use color pressure square is a sketch near a jumpe plastic rupore, a metal to the agent metal impression to the correct plastic rupore. But a replicable of the surface replica. So, replica QA, sir, Bitor and Mike is to be beauta QA when a foot is on the sir. আচ্ছা রেপ্লিকা অ্যাকচুয়ালি মাইক্রোস্ট্রাকচারাল ভিউটা ফুটাই ধরবে একটা বিশেষ কারণে সেটা হচ্ছে যে যখন আমরা একটা সারফেস ইনভেস্টিগেট করি 
আমরা দেখতেছি এটা স্মুথ সারফেস তাই না বাট অ্যাকচুয়ালি সারফেসটা কি স্মুথ ইট হ্যাজ ডিফারেন্ট বাম্পস ইন দেয়ার ইন দ্য মাইক্রো লেভেল ওকে and this surface this is imprinted on the specimen and when you, if you look at the first image um just a second if you look at the microstructure in here you'll be able to see this is the grain boundaries okay if you look at the grain boundaries this grain boundaries actually lower than the surface surface in here and there is a mismatch and when light is incident uh if you look at the surface like this is a grain and this is a grain boundary this is a grain grain boundary this is a grain grain boundary okay and when light is incident uh, the uh, this structure will be imprinted on the replica okay when light passes through this when light rays passes through this the light goes through this will be different from light goes when impinges on this surface then some some of the light gets reflected from that surface and the rest of it comes through that okay that is why there will be a difference from this structure to this structure and there will be light intensity difference and that is why you will see this is lighter and this is gray black okay have i been able to understand क्षेत्रेट जिकल स्टाडी Uh, and we'll be we'll see how how far we can go in that class 